I always find when we announce the new season, it's just, it's been such a long process, so complex of putting it together, artists wanting to do something, people being available, the titles having to add up, putting together the right mix. And then you end up with this thing that looks so shining. It's like a new shining car. And then we all know that by next July, it's going to be messy with coffee stains and spills <laughs> and, you know, happy surprises and disappointment. But I think it's such a special moment when, you know, all that work that goes into presenting to putting together a season when we when you put it on the table and say, right, there it is. Yeah, no, it's fascinating, isn't it? How it changes from those first initial ideas. Yeah, when we're <laughs> <laughs> For very, very different reasons sometimes, yeah. but it does change. I think probably like you, you know, you have these building blocks and you look around and you don't want to have too many anniversaries but, and you want the revivals, oh, but you want the new work. Now we've tried next season to do something where we have in each of the four mini seasons that we have, you know, mm -hmm. our autumn season, our winter season and so on and so forth, we have a real blockbuster with a, with a real star singer mm -hmm. and then try to next to it have something really edgy and quirky. I think the mix of showing that opera can be these massive shows, I mean, we have Anna Trepko make, singing her first Norma in the world. We have, we have Rene Fleming singing wow. Rosen Cavalier. We have, I'm directing Meister singer together with, with Tony in the bit and Bryn Tavel singing wow. sax. And then we have Jonas Kaufmann singing his first Otello ever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, four yeah, massive blockbusters. But if you don't also push people's expectations and, and conception of opera by putting then Shostakovich the nose next to it, mm -hmm. which is quirky and jazzy and very mm -hmm. theatrical. Pushing these things together, I think is what he helps keep, you know, keep us fresh. Yeah. I, it must be the same for the dancers. It's exactly, and I think that's why dancers want to join the Royal Ballet is because of the, the breadth of the repertoire. And I think this season, I, I feel we're really talking about that. So you go yeah. from the, the celebrating the Wayne McGregor and all the new work that he's done, but we're also looking at the Sleeping Beauty, which is that iconic ballet of ours, yeah. and actually one that I'm really excited to see this new generation of dancers tackling. It does feel a bit like it is a golden age right now for British artists, isn't it? I mean, you've got mm. choreographers in abundance mm. suddenly, and I mean, Liam Scarlett creating a new work for you next season yes, is, yeah. is kind of contributing to it. You know, we have Tom Addis now mm -hmm. is writing for us for next season, The Exterminating Angel, his mm -hmm. next opera after his immense really? success with The Tempest and with Powder Her Face. George Benjamin wrote Written on Skin. We were co-commissioners for that, and that's coming back next season. And that's what I think we stand for. I hope we stand for that the work is taken seriously, that the work is, whether it's successful or not, we will never know in advance. There's never any guarantee for success, but that it's honest and that it's hard work and it's well rehearsed. I think that's one of the things I hope yeah. you know, makes us stand out. No, it's really exciting to hear that, you know, and, and uh, when we have our, w there's another one this year, World Ballet Day, and I remember when we had one of our oh, yeah, first... The, the, the streaming yeah, thing the live where you streaming can follow the... the, the, the companies the, around the yeah, world yeah. and and, uh, and people, one of the first times when they were being interviewed and everybody was talking about Macmillan and the man that was interviewed, George Lamb, said, who is this Macmillan guy? You know, yeah, why is right. everybody talking about him? And of course, it's Kenneth Macmillan yeah. and of course, he's such a, a bedrock of our repertoire yeah. as well and so we've got Mylan coming back, this massive, epic, brilliant story, you know, really gripping. And then Anastasia, which hasn't seen, been seen for quite a long time. I think the beautiful thing is about a place like this is that you, we live in a society and in a time where we use words all the time. Mm. We talk and talk. I mean, God, we sit here and talk. <laughs> And there are so many things word, words can't grasp because words pull you into the realm of logic, of, of, of rationality. Mm -hmm. And here we can explore all yeah. the, the life is not logic. I mean, God, most of the time it's really irrational. Isn't I it? find talking to people, even though I think a lot of what we do is a reflection, you know, it's a mirror. We're yeah. putting up a mirror to people's lives in different aspects. But I find both with the opera, people say to me about the opera and the ballet, one of the, the reasons that they can fall in love with it is it actually takes them away from real life but yeah. brings them really focused into and in certain a, aspects. In a way it's not even a mirror, it's an x-ray isn't it? It goes deeper <laughs> yeah. because the mirror yeah. will just show you everyday yeah. life but it, it's like yeah. what's happening in yeah. there, how yeah. you express that yeah. that's such an amazing thing. For sure.